The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. All right, well, that feels really loud. Hello, better, I think, I think. Um, so yeah, it's a, Drush is a really cool command line utility to let you just type in a few words to do what normally would take you a lot of clicking and moving around and browsing your site. Um, so Drush stands for Drupal Shell. It's, it's basically a, a special kind of, of command shell, like a bash. Um, but it does Drupal stuff. It's like a little Swiss Army knife to turn you into a Drupal ninja. Um, Drush is used for a lot of different kinds of stuff. Uh, you can install sites, um, update stuff, modules, core, anything. Uh, download and install new modules and enable them. Uh, perform backups. It's kind of a release management staging thing. Um, Personally, I don't like to use it like that on its own, um, but more with something like an AG or setup, which takes advantage of the dress staging features. Um, it's got a SQL command line, so and a PHP command line, so you can run straight PHP or SQL script through the, the dress shell. Um, we can run uh, user management tasks. You can create users on the fly, block them, delete them, whatever. And there's just, it's, it's pretty limitless, like whatever you wanna come up with for a dress command that, that you want, you can script it, because um, everything's documented. Um, so I'm gonna take a look here at a, a typical setup. You know, you, you get started on a new site, you need, the first thing you need is always like CCK reviews. So you go to CCK, you find the link, download, uh, wget, untar, go to your admin module site, um, ch check off those modules, or you know, for CCK, you're checking like five different boxes, Go save, go yes, and then it's been like you know, 10 or 12 minutes waiting for all that to happen. Um, so with Drush, Drush, download, CCK, done. Like that's, it's gone to the website, it's found the latest recommended release. Um, it's brought it down, it's untarred it, unzipped it, and stuck it in the right folder, um, given it the right name. And then once it's downloaded, if we wanna enable it, one more command, Drush en for enable, I'm gonna turn on the content number and text from CCK, and um, that little dash Y says, go ahead and say yes, don't ask me if I want to enable it, because I just told you I did. So from 10 minutes to about 10 seconds is pretty awesome, because um, you can, you know, per site or per module, and this can take multiples. I can say drush DL, CCK, views, token, web form, and just stick a space between each one, it'll grab them all. Uh, so that's like, that's kind of level one. The first time you use drush, you're like, Holy crap, I just saved myself a bunch of time. So now a new release comes out on something, a security release comes out for, I don't know, um, file field, which means there's also gonna be a security release for image field for like two or three other modules because they, you know, a lot of these kind of release in sync. Um, so before you'd have to go to the site, delete the old version, download the new version, unzip it, go to update.php. With Drush, we just say PM update, PM means package manager, or project, no, package manager. Um, pick the ones I want to update, so there's a new views and token release out. I do my little dash, dash Y at the end, and those two modules will be updated to the newest security release. Um, or if I just wanna do the whole site, you know, I'm, I'm in dev, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll go ahead and just PM update, and that'll do every module that has a newer release, it'll go ahead and grab an update at once, so you don't have to specify them. Uh, any questions about download, update, enable modules kind of stuff. How would you uh, specify between different versions, like development versions that We can define that, and I will pull up an example. Let's see. 
So we would do like drush DL views um, 6.x, 3.0 alpha, whatever it is right now. I don't know, let's just guess. Um, if it doesn't exist, it won't download it, of course. So yeah, you can, you can specify specific versions, just otherwise it'll automatically assume you wanted the latest release version. How do I like start here? There we go. Uh, so another really cool thing is integrations. Uh, if you build a module and you want it to have Drush commands for other people to use right out of the box, you can. Um, some examples, Backup and Migrate uh, has done some integration, like they've got some Drush commands to do an immediate you know, database backup for you or restore. Views bulk operations, Devel, so you can like Drush generate 50 nodes. Um, then maybe for your test sites you need to create X number of nodes of these content types and 50 users and a bunch of comments and you know, you, you can either write yourself some SQL scripts to try to do all that or you can go to the devel page seven or eight times and do each, pi each piece or you know, write a couple of lines of Drush and bam, you've got like a full on set of sample data. Uh, it also integrates with features and just there's, there's tons of modules out there. The, the, some of the more popular ones um, have pretty cool Drush commands available. So um, one thing I'm probably not gonna like show here but that you should know about is when I was mentioning the staging stuff, um, Drush has this concept of site aliases and those site aliases don't have to be on the same box. So if I've got five clients with five different servers that I'm doing stuff for, I can create an alias on my box and each one of those will have either a stored username and password or a key file and I can, you know, I can Drush, you know, PM update core when 6.22 come, came out uh, immediately from their site without having to like go to their site, get into shell, try to find all that info and, and run through it. Um, so there's all kinds of little time savers like that, but you can use it to just push your changes out. So if you have, um, you've been working in dev and you want to push to this client's site, there's a Drush command to basically do an rsync to whatever your change files are, go out to their, the, uh, to push them out to their site. Um, so what I love about Drush is Drush make, it's like Drush, uh, I don't want to say on steroids because they do very different things, but Drush make is one Drush command and one Drush make file, you can build a website. Um, if most of your projects involve the same 15 modules as, as a starting point, you can either create install profiles for that or you can create a make file. And a make file says, I want these projects, these themes, uh, even these libraries, if I need to go get CK editor or a version of jQuery UI or something like that, um, the Drush make file can go out, handle that, bring it in, and I can even tell it where I wanna put that on the site, uh, which is very cool stuff. And that's basically what it takes to make one in terms of the command. I tell it where my make file is and I tell it what folder I want it to build for me. So for doing your first make file, um, if you haven't done this before, go home and check out drushmake.me. Uh, they've got a generator so you can kind of get an idea of what things look like just by checking a few boxes. Um, it'll generate a make file and make files are really cool because they're descriptive. Um, you're not doing as much scripting with it. You're saying, you know, that when we look at one, it'll say like project equals CCK, project equals views. Um, so someone who's not necessarily as well versed can still pick it up pretty quickly. They can learn by example and just, you know, take that and run with it when, when they're trying to get themselves up to speed on Drush Make. It's shareable. If I build a make file and I send it to you, then you can run it on your box too. You know, there's nothing uh, machine specific about it. Uh, again, reusable, make it once, use it for your next 20 sites. Um, recursion, recursion is awesome. Uh, if you have a module that has a make file in it, then when you use Drush make to download and get that uh, module, it'll see that that module has a make file and it'll grab any of its dependencies. So that 
in certain situations, there's kind of the chance for dependency hell where you might end up in some kind of loop. But um, one example is CK Editor. There's, there's a little drama over whether or not they want the make file in there, but it was there for a while because you'd always have to get that library whenever you wanted it. Um, same for IMC, or not IMC, tiny MCE. Um, but if they specify that make file in their module, then it'll go ahead and grab that, download it, and put it in place as part of the module install. So pretty cool stuff. Any questions so far? Yeah, um, it, you don't have to tell it anything to make that happen. Um, Drush will automatically, it's rather than deleting those old files for a module or for core, it's going to move them into a backup folder and download the fresh stuff. So if for some reason you had hacked a module, you know, or there was a patch that you had to put in place, uh, you haven't lost that. That info is still around, it's just one level, one or two levels higher in your site. Generally it's outside the site directory so it's not findable by anyone on the web. But. Um, so a make file has a few things that you just have to do. Um, right now, you have to set this one little field that says API equals two. Um, as the Drush API changes, I'm sure that number's gonna increment, but just take it as a given. Uh, you have to specify what core you want. Um, the way Drush make figures out how to, um, how to know which recommended version to get if something's got a six recommended version and a second recommended version, we have to tell it which one we want everything to be based off of. So it's always either 6.x or 7.x. And then since we're making a site, there, it has the ability to create sites without core if you just wanna get site files. Um, I haven't found a use case for that yet, so I haven't really worked with it. But generally you're gonna say what project, uh, it's gonna say, just say project Drupal type equals core. Um, and this will download the core Drupal. If you're using Pressflow, we can handle that. I'm gonna show that in a second. Uh, but once you've got those first three lines done, we can start putting our, in, our own uh, modules in. So the basic version, just projects equals views. That's gonna go to sites, all modules, and throw views in there. Um, but if you run a site where you do a lot of modules and you wanna separate contrib from the stuff you're building, uh, you're gonna go ahead and there's a additional place in the array, you can just say where you want it to go. So the second one here is gonna go to sites, all, modules, contrib, token. Uh, so you can keep things nice and neat during the install. You don't have to let it happen and then move it all around. And as I mentioned, you can do libraries, you can do regular web downloads, you can do Git, you can do SVN. Um, they all have their own little syntax that's in the documentation for it. But here's an example of uh, going to Git to grab the la latest tiny MCE. So we say our, our type will either be uh, HTTP, Git, or SVN, um, where we're getting it from, and then what the directory name is. Well, for Git, it's the directory name. For HTTP, obviously, you're just going straight to the file. So if you need to, for some reason, grab branch or trunk, I believe there's also a, a tag thing we can give in here. So multi-sites, I'd, I'd mentioned I haven't really had a use case for this. I, I don't love the way it works, but you can uh, add an, an extra command to Drush make to say no core and just specify a bunch of modules and themes. Um, I generally put my modules in the all folder, so when I'm just creating a new site, I don't need to go and run this again. But if for some reason your practice is that you're putting modules in specific client site folders, um, this could, you know, this can work out with you so that you don't have to download the whole thing only to pull out the parts you need because then you're just doing manual work again. So. So what can't it do? I said installs earlier and by installs I meant it can get everything in place. What Drushmate can't do is create your, or set up your settings.php file and create a database and match them up and get you going right away. Um, if you need that instantly, you'd wanna look into install profiles. Uh, but it gets you all the way there except for this last couple of steps, which is in itself pretty awesome. And um, the tools like Agear that uh, had been mentioned this morning, there's a, one or two sessions on today, um, they let you create your make file and you give it to them and they'll handle the rest of the installation. So. 
and DreshMate can't enable modules themselves. It downloads them and all and puts them in place. But then once you've got your DreshMate piece done, just run you know, Drush en for enable and then all those ones that you've brought in. Um, that's for just your ability to look at it later. But I wanted to show a couple of make files. And I wanna start with something really empty. So this is kind of a make file at its most basic, very uncomplicated. I'd mentioned tell it what your core version is, tell it the API equals two, and then I'm gonna grab regular core Drupal CCK and views. And that's a make file, and that'll work. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. You're, you're just describing what you want it to do. So I'll grab another one. And I wanted to show how you don't have to use just regular core. Here I'm doing press flow. Um, so I'm saying that press flow is my core rather than the other one saying project Drupal core. And then I'm telling it where to go to grab the latest version. So if some other version like that comes out, um, I don't see it happening because press flow is pretty awesome as it is. But you'd have the ability to, to specify what you want your core project to be. I think you can use install profiles there, but I may be wrong. If you wanted to like specify an open atrium make file or something. Yes. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah, um, um, I guess just let me know where to send it and I'll. Oh, okay, good. Okay. And then for cleanliness, I like to, I separate it out. I, I got this practice from the Drush Make Me site. Um, when I generated my first couple of files, it's just easier to read because it's, you know, stick a semicolon at front to comment that line out and you're good to go. Um, so the bottom one, I'd mentioned projects, so those are modules and themes, and then libraries. If I tell it that I'm downloading a library, it knows to put it in the sites all libraries folder instead of in another place. Um, but I can also specify um, if I need a specific download destination for it. There's another little piece I can put into this array that says, uh, I think it's called uh, destination folder to say where I want it to go. So those are all six. I'll show you a basic seven. Concepts are exactly the same. The only thing I changed, very first line, core seven point X now. So oh, that was actually the first site I was building. Yeah, so those are, I mean, I've got more sample files, but these are all, there's not a lot of variety that you do with it. I mean, it's kind of, these are the rules, and here's where you're gonna fit your modules, your themes, your libraries, your core version. Um, DreshMate can also do patches. If you know for some reason you're gonna download the recommended version of a module and you need a patch that hasn't been committed yet, um, you can go ahead and grab that patch as part of the process too. And I'm actually using Drush within, like you, this whole setup in here in my VM is uh, the Quick Start project. So if you wanna play with Drush without trying to figure out how to install it, I recommend it. Um, just drupal.org project Quick Start. It's, um, it's a virtual disk that's got Ubuntu with Drush set up, a couple of really cool Drush commands on it already. Um, like how I mentioned you can create your own, so these guys have created one called Quick Create. And so I can say Drush QC for quick create make file and domain. And this is what it'll look like when you're doing any kind of Drush make. It's gonna let you know as it goes. Um, found core, found so and so. For each of your modules, it'll say whether or not it found the latest version. Um, 
I feel like it's a little more robust now. I, for a while, it was kind of fragile, where if you had a problem in your make file, the whole thing would just kind of crap out on you halfway through. Um, and I think now it's a, a little better at error handling, and you can tell it there's a, a com, uh, an extra little parameter we can give it that says, like, ignore errors and keep going. So, so right now, I've just created a new site. And with the, with the um, quick start module, it does some of those extra commands I'd mentioned, like uh, it created my database and it set my settings.php file. So you can write your own Drush commands to do those extra things at the end of the process if you want to. Your, your, your uh, you know, script might be a Drush make command and then after that, you can use the SQL CLI from Drush to create your database to set your user and then use the PHP CLI to open up your settings.php file and toss that stuff in. So in theory, three or four lines of code, you can go ahead and have the full thing installed without having to learn how to code install profiles. So, Drush is a, it's a pretty cool time saver and it's got a lot of features. There's, I'm kind of just breaking the surface on it myself, like these are the things I've worked with, but I know there's, there's even more stuff in there that I haven't begun to dive into and it's, it has pretty regular releases and improvements. Um, I did a session on Civi CRM this morning and there's the beginnings of a, a project to add Drush commands to that so that you can automate like mailings and things. So. Right, so that's kind of the, the initial Drush overview. I wanted to see what questions you've got. Um, I didn't think I could actually just do me talking about Drush for a whole hour. <laughs> Look, I'm on command line. Um, Mm -hmm. um, the, oh, the site aliases? It's not too difficult. Um, once you've done it a few times, you're going to create a file. Um, I had mentioned creating your own commands. Well, this is similar to creating your own command. You create your own um, include file for it, basically. Um, and Drush knows to look for it based on the file name. Your file name will be what you want the alias to be. So it might be like, you know, staging.drushrc.inc or something like that. And then within that file, you're gonna set the actual host name and some credentials. And that way, and then from that point on, whenever you're doing it, you would say drush at staging. Go ahead and grab the path auto module. So, so setting it up, setting up your first site alias will take a little bit, um, and there's a way to, like I said, there's a way to um, generate like a, a key so that you don't get prompted for um, password, like login a password, and you don't have to store it in the file if you don't want to. Um, you can just point it to that uh, to the key. So, but that's well documented and I've only barely begun to dive into, into site aliases, so. Yes. On the drush at, drush at staging, is mm -hmm. that all that is uh, being created in the site, it's all staging search? Um, what this guy will do, this, this would be the site alias, so rather than looking on localhost, it would go to my alias www.staging.drupalcamp.org. Um, and that just saves me the time of SSHing into every box that I want to do something on. So um, drush.ws has their, their full command reference. And for the drush make side, um, they've got a, a, their readme file. It specifies like every command and what it does. And for most of them, it even gives examples. And if you don't want to look that far, drush actually embeds the help. I can actually get my help in line for every one of these things, so. I want help on, I don't remember if there's a dash in that or not. Yeah. So it tells me exactly what I need to do if I wanted to do the Drush command for a command line interface. So very similar to the way you do like uh, hook, um, like basically hook help for regular modules. Um, the Drush API has the equivalent of a hook where you define what the help is, what the help information says. Um, any 
Anything you've wondered if Drush can do it? <laughs> Anything you guys are doing manually that, that you'd love to automate? That just drives you crazy during every build or during just daily maintenance? That's something Drush can do too. I can I can run cron with Drush. I can I can clear clear cache all of them or just uh, the block cache. But yeah, if you wanted to schedule Drush to do a series of commands, just create a bash file for it. Yeah. And then doing a tar CD with the app site. Um, it's a very single file on the whole site. Um, is there one step in Drush for that? I've, I, the first I heard about that command was actually this morning, too. I, I had not run across that before. So I don't, it might just be a like Drush 5 thing. And I haven't gotten my way there yet. Um, mm -hmm. And compatibility with Drush, don't worry about it. Just grab the latest. Um, Drush is Drupal version independent. It knows which version you're going to be on when you're doing things. So if half your sites are in six and half are in seven, don't even worry about it. Just run Drush and it'll know. Have any of the Drush is yet or proved to be anything other? Um, I've seen that with Drush make, but I haven't seen anything with Drush commands with Git. I didn't know why you needed to. Right. I I heard that one. Unless you're maybe, I mean, you could use it to push things back up, but you've already got git commands for that. Yeah. So. Uh, I want to say Drush even has like a CLI. I just don't remember the. That's probably not it. <laughs> it wouldn't have held on. But you can, you can even add that as like a shortcut or put it in your, if you're making a bash file. Um, Drush has its own CLI where I can, I can skip the first word. So now I'm just down to DL token because it's already put itself into its own version. Oh, I did get it right. Look at that. So it's just like a regular command line, but the Drush commands are already built in. So well, I'm not actually in a site now, am I? And then I can just do clear all my cache. I do not have any cache on that site. That might not be a working site. All right, I know that's a working site. All right, that's me doing something wrong. But <laughs> oh, is it? Uh, we'll pick a different command then. There we go. And that should be doing this thing. So, all right, I just picked a bad command for my first example. I didn't know there was a conflict with the C compiler. Uh, but I skipped the direction, just download path auto. And it's there, and now I didn't force it to say yes, so it's going to ask me if I want to enable it. And I'll just throw it a quick yes. And now those are on. And you saw it, it um, just like when you work through the front end. I didn't have path turned on, so it went ahead and said, hey, I'm going to turn on path when I turn on path auto. So we noticed that it needs to handle that just like the modules page would do when you're checking something that has a dependency. Oh, well, that's an error with actions, so whatever. <laughs> uh, other questions? If you're gonna spend all day in Drush, I think it makes sense to save yourself some keystrokes, but for me, I'm going in, I'm spending five minutes taking care of a few sites and then getting back out, so typing Drush an extra, you know, 10 or 11 times is, hasn't been a big deal for me. But if you spend a significant amount of time there, it's, you know, it's, it's another just a nice little shortcut. Did, did the app get Drush so it can work in browsers? 
I do not know. I, I, I am officially, during my day job, I work on a Windows box. So I, <laughs> I know just enough Linux to get by, but I know Drupal. Okay. Um, <laughs> Let's just put that on silent. Yes. It's added, I think, in four, it added that ability. Or is it new to five? Right. I don't think it was. I think four introduced it. But yeah, it can keep itself up to date. Um, and so everything that a gear does from those other sessions, it does, it's just giving you a front end. It's giving you a front end to the command line shortcuts to the other front end stuff. Um, so when you create a new site in a gear, uh, what that does, or you create a new platform, it you feed it a make file and it runs drush make to get all the stuff and then it runs a few more drush commands to create a database, set your settings.php file, turn on caching, um, do some stuff with vhost so that that way the domain stuff's correct. Uh, so a gear is really a front end, I feel like, a front end to drush. I know it does a lot more, but it bases a lot of its stuff off of the drush API. So you're really just using, using Drupal to use drush to use Drupal and it's, it gets kind of weird and meta. No, you still have to use like, uh, you, you have to go into command line and do drush for that or you have to download them. It doesn't have any kind of package management. Uh, what enables that now? I'm just familiar with as a, a front end for, for drush. And on the Drupal 6, uh, you mentioned that the site is using a web enable tool mm -hmm. uh, plug in the URL. I've never made it for a model. Mm -hmm. drush it for you if you need to. Nice. I can, I can see some of these, like Drush becoming a more and more important tool and possibly even becoming more of a core thing in the future. I, don't, I mean, it won't make it for eight, I'm sure, but it, yeah. Because a lot of these times we're using Drush to get around usability problems or slow, you know, administration problems in Drupal itself. So we've solved that problem with a tool, but then we put another tool in front of that to run, to run that tool. Exactly, it's huge. Like, and on shared hosting, if you can get it installed, some will let you, some won't. Um, I've run Drush on DreamHost and Bluehost. I know AN hosting will not let you install it because they won't let you use PHP CLI. Um, and that's what Drush does, it uses PHP CLI. So. All right. I never go the whole time. <laughs> Um, you, you can install, or you download and install themes just like you, or download themes anyway, just like you would modules. Um, so, I mean, I can grab Fusion if I wanted the Fusion engine. And then I could just, you know, turn on Fusion Starter or whatever. Can, any, can I do this? Will this work? Okay. Very nice. Uh, yeah, you can. Uh, Drush VSET. And then it's. Um, it's. Yeah. I, yeah, I, can't, I, don't, I don't remember the name of the variable, but. I have not tried that yet. Um, 
I know it is supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I haven't seen it in action anywhere in the wild. Um, I, I follow the planet pretty closely and haven't seen anyone post on it there. So anybody already using Drush? Yes. No, make is just for making. Yeah, it, it, it uh, doesn't know what, if there's already a site there, it won't build it because it'll see that you've already got one in place. So it's literally just for the initial grouping all your stuff together and getting it in place. So if something that Right, like once you brought it in. Or if you, if you know during the process of doing your initial build that you're gonna need the dev version of something or an alpha that's not recommended, um, we just specify that in the make file. Uh, I think one of these I've set a specific version. I don't have one in here, all right. But we can, I mean, I can specify it. Um, I should go ahead and show you actually, since we've got Plenty of time left, drushmake.me for doing your first one. Very easy to start with. Pick my version, pick my distro. Um, I never see a reason to use core anymore. Um, I'll grab admin, CCK, I don't know, just a couple of random things. Theme. And then I can tell it where I want to put all my modules and generate. And that's how easy it is to make your first make file. You can check some boxes. So, uh, installing Drush, I didn't touch much on, but it's, it's not too tough. It can be, it's a huge pain on a Windows box. If you're working in that setup, like the XAMPP stack, you have to do so much just to get it to work there. Um, but on a, on a Linux box, uh, it's, pretty easy to, you create basically what, like the dot drush folder in the, in your, um, in your user folder. And then it's basically like you would alias anything else. So you, once you alias it, you don't have to browse to it to execute every time. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend trying to do it on Windows just yet though. It does, but you have to do a lot of OS things to make it work. Um, you have to modify a couple of the Drush files themselves. You have to download a bunch of, um, like you, you have, Windows doesn't have wget or uh, tar or gzip or any of these other libraries that you need. So you have to find all of those libraries and some versions are out of date and you have to go to sites that aren't the official site to get the right version. And you have to download BSD tar but rename it tar and there's, there's weird complications like that. And then Drush Make seems a little more hairy on Windows, but doable. I'm, I'm slowly working through like step-by-step -step instructions that I'm gonna stick on the internets for folks trying to do Drush on Windows. <laughs> um, I have not used it much. I mean, I'll use it for like Devel. Uh, when I want to generate a bunch of nodes or a bunch of content. Um, and I'll, I'll use it to make backups and, and move things around, but I haven't, it, it hasn't really made its way a whole lot into my toolbox in terms of developer stuff. It's definitely got the commands for it, but.
Yeah, automating backups, um, you had mentioned, you know, we would create a bash file, so I'd use the backup and migrate. That's, that's the way I would, I would do it with backup and migrate, just because I, I love that module. Um, but, you know, I, I could easily run a drush command that just does a SQL dump of my database to an out file somewhere, um, and then run a, you know, run some, add other stuff into my bash file to move it around or to move it to another site, or. I could probably, if I played with it enough, use the site aliases to push my backups from one server to another, just for safekeeping, not even for like syncing. So. so has anybody here not installed Drush before or tried it? Are we mostly first timers? I hope. No. No. All right. There is enthusiasm. <laughs> um, well, the projector went out on me, but I don't really have a whole lot of other to show unless you guys have some more questions. Is there like a special button to turn back on? Uh, yeah, because it's on. It says the lamp's on. Oh, no. It's not me this time. This morning it was totally me when my VM blew up. <laughs> yep. Uh, all right. Um, I guess if you guys don't have any other questions, that's that's what we got. All right. I can help with like that. We have the same problem. What would happen if you did this? Like you gave me a I found a problem. How do you do that? It's like this. Well, I disagree with that. Really? Who would have thought of that? Let's put the word out. WebOS. An OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS, HP. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.